We have Thursday night football, Green Bay Packers versus the San Francisco 49ers. Love this game. Obviously a rematch of, well, the San Francisco 49ers bludgeoned the Green Bay Packers twice last year, uh, most notably the NFC Championship game. But we saw Garoppolo go down. Um, You know, what's his status going to be against Green Bay? Green Bay coming off a loss to Minnesota, a game that everybody thought they would win. They lost. That's something I would call a bad loss. Um, You know, Minnesota had a bye week, but whatever. So the question is, you know, what happens? Is this a repeat of last year? Is it Green Bay going to bounce back from a loss? I don't think San Francisco is a bad team by any means either. So the matchup-wise, it's going to be interesting. Let me hit you with the projections, and you take it away after that. Uh, Aaron Rodgers, I actually, against this defense, I have as a start this year. This isn't the same defense as the San Francisco 49ers last year. This year I have him as a start. Aaron Jones, man, come on, come back. I trade Zeke away. As soon as I trade him away, Aaron Jones gets hurt. It's killing me. But uh, Zeke or uh, Aaron Jones need him to be back. I don't like the matchup anyway, but whoever it is, whether it's Williams or uh, um, Jones, I have him as a start. Devontae Adams, I have a horrible projection on him, but you start him. I mean, come on, you got to start him. And even even with bad projection, I mean, remember he did pretty well against San Francisco last year. Um, and Tanyan, I, I still like what I'm seeing from Tanyan, so I don't mind him as a start either. I kind of stay away from everybody else there. San Francisco, I'm going to stay away from Garoppolo or Mullins or whoever the quarterback is. Uh, I still like Jamichael Hasty. I still like Jarek McKinnon. Um, Hasty didn't have a great running uh, yards per carry average against Seattle. I'm not worried about that at all. Uh, Ayuk, I like as a pickup. Um, Debo, we'll see what his status is, and uh, Kittle, we'll see what his status is. A lot of up in the air right now. Take it away, David. Yeah, let's talk about Jamichael Hasty, right? Because he was a guy who we were talking about a lot last week, and mm-hmm. a guy who both of us like. And you're right, the efficiency was not there against Seattle. But he did have 13 touches. He did get the goal line work, mm-hmm. or at least some goal line work, enough to get in the end zone. I know McKinnon also yep. got one as well. But talk about Green Bay. What is the Achilles heel? And they kind of covered it up a little bit early in the season, but it's that run game. And we saw them get gashed by uh, Dalvin Cook this past Man, week. We yeah. saw it in the playoffs last year. That was the four-touchdown Raheem Mostert game. Mm-hmm. Right now, Green Bay, they have overtaken Carolina as the number one fantasy-friendly matchup for running backs. Mm-hmm. They've allowed the most points per game to fantasy running backs ahead of the Lions and the Panthers have fallen down to third now. So it's a smash matchup for Jermichael Hasty. Short week. Talk about... George Kittle, is he even going to play? He had the injury. Debo Samuels on the IR. I mean, Jamichael Hasty, if he's still available, he shouldn't be, especially if you were listening to us last week, he shouldn't be. But if he's still available, he is a must-add for this week. Mm -hmm. He's a must-start for this week. Nick Mullins, you talked about him a little bit. You're not thrilled with him. I am intrigued, at the least, with Nick Mullins. Because I was doing just a little bit of um, stat sheet scouting Mm because I haven't had too much time to go over the game film with Nick Mullins. And obviously some of this came against Seattle and garbage time. Make sure you watch that Philly game too when you look at Mullins' (laughs) game film. But sorry, go ahead. He he also played in three other games this year. But 79 passes. He's got a 69.9 completion percent. That's sixth in the NFL behind only Breeze, Derek Carr, Teddy B, Russ, and Fitzmagic. His 8.4 yards per attempt ranks third in the NFL behind only Russell Wilson and Deshaun Watson. So I'm I'm intrigued a lot. The Green Bay pass defense is a lot better than they have been in the past this mm-hmm. year. But I'm intrigued, at, and we'll talk about it more as, as a waiver wire ad, because Jimmy G is not playing well right now. And that job is, is to put it frank, it's up for grabs. If Nick Mullins can stake his claim, I, I'm intrigued by what he could do in this offense, especially once they start to get Debo and Gill and some of those pieces healthy. Back. It, and it's worth noting that uh, C.J. Beathard, who did come in for Mullins in that Philadelphia game I referenced, he was not active yesterday. I think he was a healthy scratch. So, I mean, Mullins is, you know, the primary backup. And he has played, I mean, a couple of years ago, <clears throat> I can't remember if Garoppolo was even on the team yet, but a couple of years ago, Mullins played as a very young player, maybe even a rookie, and he, he did well. Um that Philly game really gives me pause because I, I thought he was going to play well in that game. Oh, my gosh, and it was bad. It was bad news. But, you know, that happens, too. I mean, Aaron Rodgers didn't play well against Tampa Bay. Is anybody freaking out about that? No. So, I, you know, reasonable point. And Hasty, you're right. He's still available on waiver wire. We'll talk about that later in the game. Let me hit you. Um, did you have anything about the Green Bay Packers? Um, sorry, I didn't 
want to cut in Not too much. Not too much. Okay. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry with the Packers. You know what you're getting with Adams, Jones. And the only thing I would say is Jamal Williams is the clear backup. He's yeah. a, a must start in pretty much any any matchup. I would say he's matchup proof when Aaron Jones is not in the lineup. Agreed. And Robert Tanyan, Robert Tanyan, I should say, you, you can count on him a little bit more. I think it was good to see now that he's healthy back. Sternberger's eating into the, the targets a little bit. But they don't have a number two wide receiver right now. We'll Agreed. see what happens when Lazard gets back. Agreed. And by and one other note on uh, San Francisco tight end: if Kittle can't go, I do like Dwelly um, as a, as an ad, especially daily fantasy. If you're playing some of these things, you know I, I don't have any problem starting San Francisco tight end, whoever it is. Obviously, Kittle is a cut above everybody else, you know, in the league except for maybe Kelsey. But if he's out, you know, this this offense will support a backup tight end. So I like Dwelly there. Let me hit you with the line here, uh, David. Green Bay Bavada has it minus three versus San Francisco. Who do you got? I'm definitely not touching this game unless it's a, <laughs> something where I have to pick off, especially the Thursday night games. Yeah. But I'm going to opt with that somewhat healthier team right now in the Green Bay Packers, and I do like Mullins, but right now it's Aaron Rodgers probably versus a backup quarterback. Yeah, if Garoppolo was healthy, I'd probably lean towards San Francisco. I don't love it, so I'm going to say Green Bay. Um, I had this actually as a push regardless. I had this as a 27-24 game, even with um, Garoppolo out. So I don't love the line. I'm staying away just like you are, David. But uh, yeah, I, I guess I'll go Green Bay. Next game.